did I find in the cellar this morning? Oh, it's a boat for, for a very small person or, or an elf or an ant. It is a boat, but this boat is broken. There must have been a terrible storm somewhere. I wonder what happened and how it ended up in my cellar. Hmm. I know. I bet we can work it out. I'll start. Um. Ooh. Gracie McTato lived on the island of Thare, where there was scarcely ever a breeze. She waited for weeks for a favourable wind so she could go and see her sister on the mainland. She baked a pie. Oh, and was trying very hard not to eat it before she arrived. She put up the sail. And set off onto a fine, calm sea. She was caught unawares when a storm flew up. It was a storm unlike any Gracie had ever seen. The lightning flashed red and green, and the rain fell down in spirals, not in straight lines. Gracie tried to steer her boat, but it was useless. All she could do was keep it from tipping over. Oh, she gripped onto the sails as hard as she could. It was so exhausting to hang on. She was soaking wet and so cold, but that her bones were made of ice. And all this made Gracie very, very cross. She shouted up at the clouds in a huge burst of anger. You stupid clouds, I hate you! I say, the clouds growled back, how very rude. Gracie was so surprised she fell backwards onto the deck of the ship. I'm sorry, she blurted, but it's just that I'm so very cold and wet and hungry. It's not our fault you're hungry, retorted the clouds. Why don't you go down below decks and have something to eat and we can get on with our storm? Anything to eat, said Gracie. What? Nothing at all, said the clouds. How do you expect to sail across the seas on an empty stomach? Well, I suppose I do have the pie that I made for my sister. But if I eat that, I'll have nothing left to give her. You better eat it, said the clouds. Your tummy is louder than thunder. Well, I suppose she won't mind if I have a bit, admitted Gracie. Gracie went down the little staircase below decks. It was so much calmer down below decks. Gracie could still hear the rain pattering above her head and the boat was bobbing about quite a bit. But she felt so much safer down inside her wooden cocoon. Gracie picked up the pie and undid the wrappers. Oh, the smell of the pastry wafted up her nose. Her mouth started watering. I'll just have a tiny bit of pastry, thought Gracie. She tenderly picked off a few flakes and put them on her tongue. Mm. Mm. Oh goodness, they were delicious. And now she could smell the filling. Oh, carrots and potatoes and gravy. Just what she needed on this wet, miserable afternoon. I'll just have a tiny bit of filling, she thought. Mm. 
maybe a tiny bit more. Mm, mm, mm. My sister won't pop. Mm. And Gracie wasn't sure exactly how it happened, but a few minutes later, the whole pie was gone, and her belly felt very full and very round indeed. As she got up to brush the crumbs off her clothes, the whole boat lurched violently as her weight shifted. Uh-oh, she thought. That can't be good. There was a terrible crack from above. Gracie climbed back above deck to see the damage. The mast of the ship was broken and the sails hung helplessly, flapping in the wind. The wind was strong, even though the rain had stopped. Gracie thought about shouting at the wind, but she didn't want to make it angry. She felt very frightened and alone. All she could see around her was surging grey water. She looked for another boat, for some land. Then, out from the darkness, she spotted a chink of light, light. Could it be a, a butterfly? A, a, a spaceship? No, a helicopter. Maybe. She got her binoculars out for a closer look. cocked his head the other way. Oh, yes, sure. Wait, did you say sure or core? Can you understand me? Core, 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 core. Sorry, it's just been a bit of a long day. I didn't even know clouds could talk until about half an hour ago. Core. Yeah, they do seem a bit angry today. Oh. Look at this boat. It's a mess. I'll never get to my sister's now. It's a shame you can't sail it. Caw, 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 caw. You're right. <laughs> At least we have each other. Gracie wrapped her arms around the seagull's feathery tummy and gave it a comforting squeeze. Mm. Suddenly, the seagull started to cough. <coughs> First, Gracie was worried, <coughs> but then, out of the seagull's mouth, <coughs> popped a sherbet lemon. Oh, thank goodness, I've had that thing stuck in my mouth all morning. Now, as I was saying, I am actually very good at sailing ships. Oh. Do you think we could sail this one? Gracie asked, wondering if she'd had a bump on the head in the storm. I don't rightly know, said the seagull. Well, we'll need a few supplies. We'll need something to shore up that mast and maybe something for a sail. Gracie had a think for a minute, then went down below decks to dismantle her cabin bed. emerged again. The sun had come out. Well these do, she said, hoisting up some planks and old duvet covers. Perfect, said the seagull. <sighs> Gracie helped to put up the new mast. 
And the seagull grabbed hold of the duvet cover. He tied it to the top of the mast. And then he fell inside. Oops, he said, tying the other corner to the beam. Then he jumped back aboard deck. How's that? He said. Oh, it's wonderful, said Gracie. Oh, there's only one problem. I'm completely lost. I don't know where we are. Do you think you could help to navigate us to my sister's house? The seagull popped back on top of the mast and had a look around. Scrap! There! Land ho! said the seagull pointing his wing. Gracie let out this rope and wound in that one and it wasn't long before they were zooming off along the salty sea. Gracie thought this must be what flying feels like. Whee! she shouted, grinning from ear to ear. She was going to be all right. They were going to make it. Soon, the boat bumped up against the sandy beach of the mainland. Gracie! Her sister was waving and smiling and running up the beach. And soon, she wrapped up Gracie in a great big cuddle. Oh, you made it. Oh, my goodness. What happened to your boat? It's a long story, said Gracie, but I made it through thanks to my new friend, the seagull. Caw! <laughs> well, why don't you tell me all about it, said Gracie's sister. Let's go back to my place and have some of that delicious pie you promised me. Seagull, I have some mackerel if you want to come with us. Gracie looked a bit sheepish. Yeah, um, about the pie. With the seagull flying above their heads, the two sisters walked arm in arm up the beach. They were so happy. Nothing could trouble them now that they were together. Oh, Diana, that was so much fun. I think we made a really good story. Well, that's the end of our story, but maybe you at home can tell us what happens next. Thank you.